Hi. Uh, hi, welcome to the last seminar of this semester. Um, today's topic is parametric polymorphism. Um, uh, I think this is the most interesting topic of uh, this semester seminar, so I think it's the highlight. And I hope you can be interested in this topic. So let's begin. So <coughs> during the previous seminars, we build our own collections for example, list. So our list contains only integers. So we define list, and it is amp list or pair of an um, integer and another another list. Also, we <coughs> define our own option type. So also our option was option of integers. So there was none or some of integer. So it can only contain integer. Also, we build streams of integers as well. So this is its head is integer and its tail is lazy value to another string. So we define our collections from integers, but actually in practice we need lists, options, and strings for another types as well. So for example, we can think about list of booleans, an option of a function, or a stream of doubles, and so on. So maybe we can think about list of lists and so on. However, uh, our collections cannot deal with such types. Uh, they can deal with only integers. Also, we define our own functions, helper functions for lists and options and streams. So we define list map function. So it takes integer list of integers and a function to from integer to integer. Also, uh, we and create list filter function and it takes list of integers as well and it can take a function from integer to boolean. It's similar for the option. So we our option map function takes only option of integers and a function from integer to integer. So it gets option of integer and create another option of integer. And it's similar for the option plan map function. And also it's same to same as this twin Functions. String map function takes a function from integer to integer, and string map to function takes two stream of integers and take a function from integer to integer. However, uh, we also need function for list options and strings for other types, not integers, not only integers. For example, um, we want to filter list of strings and create new list of strings. Also, when we can map from some uh, some option from some option to the another type of option, for example, from an option of string to option of integer. Also, um, we might need string, uh, string map function from uh, two strings of integer to string of doubles. However, our collections cannot deal with such situations. So, <coughs> we can think about some solutions to deal with such things. First, we can define uh, different types and functions for every possible types. For example, we can define a list for integers and a list for strings and so on. So we, we might build every collection for each type we can deal with. And we might create function for each type. For example, uh, since map takes uh, uh, its it's fun uh, it is a function from some type of list to another kind of list, so we need two possibilities of types. So maybe it can be a uh, function from integer to list of integer to list of integer, or list of integer to list of string, or list of string to list of integer, and many other possibilities are possible. And we might define all the possibilities by hand. However, it's very, very bad choice because it has its difference is only type and it has the same uh, body so it's exactly the same and the only difference is type and type name so it's very very inefficient and bad design also uh, of course uh, we are when if we are just the user then we can define collections for types only we need but however, if we are library designer, then we have to deal with a lot of types 
And maybe pipes can be infinitely many because even though we have only integer and error type, function type, we can still create infinitely many types. For example, integer, integer, to integer, integer, to integer, to integer. So it is not feasible solution for library designers. So we might think about another solution. The second one is the solution that using the top type. So top type means that every value belongs to the top type. So in Scala, we denote it by any, type any. So let's see some examples. We can type check one, two, type any, and two for any, and string abc for any, and some function for any. So any contains every possible value in this language. But also, we can use any like another type. So we define parameter type as any, and its identity function, so its return type, also be any. So this function can consume any type of value and return in the input value is that. So this is the same code, and when we execute this code, we can see um, type check succeed and everything goes well. So when we use type any to define our list, then this list will take every possible value. So we define our list, but now the type of element is n. Then uh, our list can store any kind of values. So this is integer of list, a list of integers, and this is a list of strings. Uh, however, um, maybe we can uh, so we can put any value. So um, this it means that the elements of list are not more homogeneous. They can have different types. So in this case, this list contains uh, integer 1, string a, and boolean true. So it's a list like in dynamic, dynamic type languages, like Python or JavaScript. So this choice has some problem, because uh, when we get some elements from this integer, then the elements might have type n. So still, uh, we know these elements contains only integers, but we need to type cast it to check and to make it integer for type checker. So this code will generate type error because both expression has type n and there is nothing defined plus operator for n. So we need to type cast it to integer and make it integer for type checker. It's actually the value is not changed, but it is only for type checker and add it and there will the type error will be resolved. However, uh, we can uh, make some mistake. We can mis combine, uh, we can accidentally put a string to this list, even though we thought it is in the list of integers. However, there is no guarantee that this thing will not happen. So this thing can be can happen. And when we use this list. And when, if we thought this list is integer list of integers, then we will try to typecast its first element. However, since this is string and it cannot be uh, casted to integer, and casting um, happen at runtime, so it will throw um, cast the class cast exception at runtime. And this is very bad behavior because we cannot guarantee there is no type error in at compile time. So this is the list of any we defined, and this is just how our function. So we can create any kind of list like this. So you can simply try this code, and there is no type error. So we can put anything in this list, and we define list get function. And first, when we try to type check this code, then it will create type error. And then when we type check this code, then it will do not create type error. So the first code created type error, and this does not create type error. And next, 
when we when we try to type test string to integer by mistake, then it will create runtime error, which is bad behavior. So it is not type error at compile time, it's type error, but it is cast error at runtime. So, uh, uh, as you just saw, uh, this, uh, this choice is quite error-prone. Uh, the collection can contain any type of value, so it, the value might have wrong type, and user may cast an element to wrong type. So, nothing is guaranteed by type check. So, uh, I'll suggest the solution for this problem. We know that a function abstracts a term by term. So in, in these two terms, uh, this is 1 times 1 times 1, and this is 2 times 2 times 2. So uh, these two terms have common patterns, and we can abstract these terms by creating a function or a lambda expression. So um, this common occurrence is replaced by variable x, and we can apply 1 or 2 to this function to create these terms. So we can think about the same thing for the times. For example, this is list filter function for a list of integers, and this is list filter function for a list of strings. So this notation is not for Scala, but it's just an example. So we can abstract this occurrence of type integer and string by type variable. So this function f is function for type. It takes a type and returns some term. So t is some type, and every occurrence of this type can be varied is replaced by t. And when we apply type to this type function, then we can create our original term. So we call this feature parametric polymorphism. Actually, polymorphism is more general terms than means it allows using a single implementation for a single symbol with multiple types. So there is um, multiple kinds of polymorphism, for example, subtype polymorphism and adult polymorphism. So, um, however, um, we call this feature parametric, parametric polymorphism because every implementation is parametrized by types. So because of it is parametrized, we call this parametric polymorphism. And we will deal with subtype polymorphism in a, in a few slides. So we can define our list again by using parametric polymorphism of Scala. Here, uh, now list takes a type parameter t. So in this, this list is up, uh, take, has elements of type t, and this list is list of t. And also, uh, this object new will be a list, a uh, empty list of type t, and this cons is a pair of t and list of t. However, when we run this code, we will see this error because object keyword cannot take type parameter because in Scala, the value cannot have can, value cannot be polymorphic, so every value should have some not polymorphic type. However, when this object keyword creates some value new and this new cannot have type parameters, so this is not a low expression in Scala. So you can try this by running this code. So when we run this code, you can see there is error because object cannot take type parameter. So here, we just use a simple solution that use class keyword instead of object. So actually, the empty list is the only empty list, so every empty list is the same value. So this is not good design choice, but at this point, we will solve this problem like this, and we will see another better solution later. So now we can define our polymorphic list and empty list and cons. Now you can simply define a create list like before, but now you should specify type argument. 
So when we create list of integers, then you should put this integer as type argument inside square bracket. So this is a list new and empty parentheses means empty list of integers. And you can use const to create any, another integer list and so on. And for string, it's the same, but only type argument is different. So now we want to create list of strings. So we use type argument string. So this is the same code. And you can see it works well. It creates a list of integers, and it creates a list of strings. And you can still use some <coughs> pattern matching for this polymorphic list. And the important point is that pattern matching does not need type arguments. So you should not write square bracket and type argument while pattern matching. And also, uh, different from using top type, now this uh, accessing field half is type checked with precise int, not any. So now we can use our list type safely. So this create list of integers and uh, accessing half of this list returns value of type int. And also this expression will uh, re result type int because this h and p will have type integer and h plus 3 will have type integer. So mm, when we run this code, there is no problem for running this code. There will not be any type error or runtime error. However, sometimes annotating type argument for every time will, very ver will be very verbose because every, everybody can know this list if, is list of integers because every element of this list is list of uh, integers. Also, in this case, every elements are strings, so everybody can know that it is a list of strings. So Scala can infer type arguments when you omit them. So in this case, uh, you can explicitly type check this nail to list integer. And in this case, mm, uh, even if you do not write this type annotation, maybe you can write or you might not write, but still, Scala will type check this list as list of integers because this one and two are integers and in makes is the constraint for type argument that the type argument should be integer. So this code will also execute it without any problems. So this is the same code, and when we run this, you can see, even though we omit our type argument, it is still type check to list of integers and list of strings without any error. Also, uh, we will define our helper function to create list. So, I will not show this detailed implementation, but we can still create list by using this list function. And also, in here, we can omit type argument for method call as well. So, you can use this helper function to create list. And now, uh, the first, uh, first list is type checked with list of integers, and second, list are type chart of two list of strings. Now well, let's define our original utility function for um, par, um, as polymorph polymorphically. So um, this is our original implementation. It takes only list of integers and function of int from integer to boolean. So we do not need to change our implementation. The only place to be changed is type annotations. So we should add type parameter t to this, uh, this method because it will use t inside its uh, parameter list and function body. So you should bind this type parameter here, and you can use t for the 
uh, for this site. So now the parameter list is type of list of t, and a function can be type of, of function from t to boolean, and it will return list of t. And we do not change our implementation. The only change part is here because our new chain is changed to class non more object. And you can run this code. So first you can annotate type parameter here, a type argument here, and filter list of integers. Also you will annotate type parameter here and filter list of strings. And you may uh, omit type parameters. So let's try this code. So this is the exactly same code with method definition. And when we run this, um, when we do not omit type arguments, then it works correctly. So it is filtered and returns a list of two and four. Also, when we do not omit type, type argument string, it works correctly. It contains only string of length two. However, when we omit type argument, there is a type error. So um, this is some limitation of the Scala type inference. When we type check uh, this anonymous function without any type annotation, then this function uh, has already known type. However, um, in this case, there is no type argument here, and Scala will type check both expression to infer this type argument. But however, when we type check ex expression, the Scala compiler um, does not know any information for this anonymous function, and it will fail to infer type of this anonymous function. So we can think some tricks to for better type inference. Now, we can think about two solutions, current and object-oriented style methods. So actually, Scala standard library use object-oriented style and use this kind of solution. And actually, the solution is basically same thing, and we will try the first one here. So what is current? Current means we can divide this parameter list to uh, separated parentheses. So in this case, if it takes um, two parameters at one time, but it, in this case, we take parameters one by one. So, and uh, other things are the same. So we can call this function by passing type, um, passing arguments at once. And in this case, we need two parentheses to pass arguments. And they will work correctly. So this is the code, and it works. It returned the same result. Well, actually, this current does not affect to behavior of program. However, current affect to behavior of type checker. So when we use current for parameters of this filter function, then the Scala compiler will type check this expression force and infer this type argument and then type check this function. In this case, so and every part is same, only current is different one. And when we type check this code, first this is this list is inferred to a list of integers, and then this omitted type bar arguments will be inferred as an uh, integer, and then this function should have type integer to string, and now Scala compiler can type check this anonymous function without any problem. And also it works similarly for the second case. So we redefine list filter function using current and run this code. So here, you can see um, every function call um, do not resolve type better and run correctly. So this is kind of some trick, but uh, this allows us to know how Scala's type inference work. 
So now we can do similar things for other utility functions. First, list map. So it takes the original version of list map takes a list of integers and function from integer to integer. Now we need two type parameter. So T is element of given list and S is type of element of returned list. And function should have type from T to S. Then every element in this list will be mapped by this function F. And function body do not, does not need any change. Also, for um, type inference, we use current as well. So this first code map list of integer to list of integer. So every element will be scared. And in this case, we map list of string to list of integer. And it will contain every length of string in the given list. And in this case, we map a list of from a list of string to a list of string, and our string is reversed. So we can try this code, and we can check that everything goes well. So this is the same code, and when we run this, you can see that every element is scared, and it calculates the length of strings, and every string is reversed. Now let's think about list fold right function. So list fold right append this initial value at the right end of the list, and it sequentially fold the list from the opposite end. So our original version takes a list of integers and initial value integer, and a function which takes two integers and return one integer, and the result becomes also an integer. Now we need two type parameter. So t is a type of element of given list, and s is appended initial value at the right side. And we start from the right side. So this is list, and this is s. So uh, a function is applied to value of t and s, and it is folded, and some new value of type s is created. And it folded again, and with um, applying function f to t and s, and it create value of s again. And when we reach the left side of the list, then we will result a new value of type s. So this is a type signature of list fold right function. It's polymorphic version. So we can do many things by using fold right function. The first use case is very simple. It calculate a product of integer list. So it starts with 1, and it is folded, and every time it is multiplied, and it will reserve 6. And in this case, we will deal with list of strings, and initial value is empty string. And every time it is folded, the string is contaminated, and the result value will be string of ABC. So every string in this list will be contaminated. And in this case, we start with list of integers, and initial value of empty string. Then, every time it is folded, this uh, integer will be contaminated with string. So it is converted to string, and two string are contaminated. So every element of integer are converted to string and contaminated. So this result will be a string of one, two, three. So this set is the implementation and the same code. And by running this, you can see that it worked as we expected. It returns 6, A, B, C, and 1, 2, 3 of string. Also, we can do the similar thing for list fold left function. So it is same to the fold right function, but it starts from the left. So it takes, in, in the original version, it takes list of integers and initial integer value and function from two integers to integer, and it returns final integer. In polymorphic version, we need two type par parameter here. So t is the uh, element type of element in the list, and value of type s will be appended at the left side of the list, and it will be folded. So at first, 
function f will, will take the value of s and t and fold it and it will create the new value of s and it will be folded again and it will create a new value of s and finally it will reach the right end of the list and it will return a value of type s and also inside this function, this upper function should have proper type of notation so we can use <coughs> this implementation for variety of lists so this is called calculate product of elements again and also this code to, does the same thing for list it can, can make every string in this list so the order is changed but this add and multiplication operations are commutative and associative so nothing will be changed and we can do some interesting thing by using fold we can implement reverse function for list by using fold left function so this fold left function uh, takes two type arguments of integer and list of integer so this list contains integers and we start with empty list of list of integers and every time it is folded it will uh, it will prepend the given element to in front of the list so it will be list of one and then two is prepended and three is prepended so the resulting list will be list of three two and one with it which is reverse of given list and also when we omit type argument here and the interesting thing is this code will, um, will result type error so even though we use car carving here is still uh, result a type error and the reason is that this list empty list will be type checked to list of nothing rather than list of integer so I will explain what exactly is nothing in in the future however uh, since is, is, this is the empty list and, uh, and you, you can see this implementation that only n value of n will affect type inference of s so mm, Scala type checker cannot know that this list should be list of integers so mm, when, you, when we type check here mm, we know we want that h uh, t should be integer but t is inferred as nothing and this will create type error so you should annotate type here or at least here to make this in list to list of integer explicitly so this is the implementation and you can run this code so first uh, it successfully calculate product and concatenated strings and the first one does not offer uh, result type better here it will result type better because it, it, it is expected to have type nothing rather than integer and here we put type notation here and it will work correctly Until now, we saw some example of parametric polymorphism. However, uh, we now from now on we will deal with another type of polymorphism, which is subtype polymorphism. However, this is not the main topic, so I will explain this very briefly. So, subtype polymorphism is defined by substitutability. So, if every value of type t can replace any occurrence of type of value of type s then t is a subtype of s so it is notion of subtyping and we annotate it by this less than and column expression so it is widely used in notation in programming language so we already see some example of type subtype polymorphism top n is top type so every type t is subtype of n so every type of type t can be used as type any and since every value has some type so every value can be used of type any 
And also, the bottom type is dual notion of the top type. Uh, top type is type of every value, and bottom type contains no value. So there is no value belongs to this type. So, so therefore, this nothing type is subtype of any type because no value is belongs to this type. So every value of nothing can substitute anything because it's true by vectorcity. So, however, we can still use type nothing by drawing a drawing an uh, exception. So, so that's the main reason that you can use a throw expression for any place because it will be type checked to bottom type and it will always succeed type checking because it can fit to any required type. So you can see this example here. When this draw new exception expression is type checked as type nothing. However, to prevent runtime error, I um, put lazy keyword here to not to evaluate this expression. And also, um, when we use nothing as type parameter, type parameter type, then the return type can be anything for this identity function because this x can be used as any any type. However, actually, in reality, this, this function cannot be called because there is no value of type nothing. So you can check this code by running this same code. So this exception is type check. So exception is, has type exception, not nothing, but throwing an exception has type nothing. And every and this nothing X can be returned as any possible types. So what's the point of declaring those functions? So um, I want to just show that you can use this X to any type. So it will mm. not create any type error. Right. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is Scala would better reject that. Prevent. Mm -hmm. mm, maybe that's a possible choice, but that might be ad hoc because it is Mm. Saying that the occurrence of nothing type in parameter positions are going to be rejected at compile time because there yeah. are no values available. Yeah, that's right. That might be a possible choice. Yeah. I'm not sure, but I think it is still a reasonable choice to just accept this code because anyway, it will be correctly rejected when we some have something to have, so it will not cause any problem in practice. So anyway, was going so, uh, and we all, always use notion of subtype polymorphism by using extends here. So when we define um, class fruit and extends fruit by apple and banana, then in this case, apple and banana is subtype of fruit. So every value of type apple or banana can be used for type of fruit. However, its converse is wrong, so you cannot use type value of type fruit for type of apple because the uh, value of fruit can be uh, some value of banana and banana cannot be used as apple and vice versa. Oh, and also apple is not a subtype of banana and vice versa. So they, uh, it is two different kinds of polymorphism. And usually, functional language use parametric polymorphism, and all object-oriented language use subtype polymorphism. And Scala is a mix of functional language and object-oriented language. So it has both. And the interaction between two features is quite interesting. So from now on, we will see how to feature inter. So mm, we implement a pan function for a list. So it takes two lists and just concatenate them and create new list. So mm, it takes the same type of list. So the first argument is list of type T, and the second argument is list of type T. And trivially, the return list is list of type T. And we can use this function well 
we can concatenate this list of integers and list of strings. So we can pass this code. So it is the same code and implementation. And when we run this code, and then integer lists are successfully concatenated and type checked as list of integers. And list of string is concatenated and type checked as list of strings. Now, uh, let's think about some up, uh, application for fruit store. So we will buy and sell some fruits. So this fruit has value salt, which indicate this fruit is whether salt or not. By uh, using this abstract value here, so you can access field salt for every value of type fruit. You know, here Apple extends this fruit and it has filled salt and radius. So it indicates the size of this apple. And let's assume that there is some function that, so it is uh, it, uh, assume that it is some analogy of buying apple from some bigger store. So it will return a uh, given amount of apples inside the list. So it will have type list of apples. So we first bought one apple and then we buy two apples more and we append these two list of apples. So um, here fruit is defined, apple is defined and we will call um, get apples to make list of apples. So you can see here in the append function works well and create a new list of uh, all the apples and this has type list of apples and now we have more class more subtype of fruit so banana, banana is a new subtype of fruit and it also has both salt and has the length uh, so it is, indicates length of this banana and this get banana function returns a list of bananas of given amount and we can create a banana list by call a function get bananas so now we bought both apples and bananas and we want to treat um, both at the same time by putting them in the same list so we call a pen to apples and bananas, and unfortunately, this will occur, and this will result type error because this is a list of apples and this is a list of list of bananas, and our append function should take the list of same type, so it will be rejected by type checker. But we do not want this thing, so you can check this behavior. So this define class banana, and when we append to list, it will result type error. So this is it has a very long long time message error message. And <coughs> so when we can uh, so the reason is that list of t is a subtype of list of s, if and only if that t is equal to s. So we call this property uh, that we call this property invariant. So we say that list is invariant to this type parameter t. So one possible solution is mapping uh, of these apple and bananas for type fruits. So actually this anonymous function uh, do, does not do any meaningful calculations. So it does retype apples to fruit and bananas to fruit. So this whole expression will be type checked as a list of fruit and it can be appended successfully. Here. So this is the same code and when we run this code then now there is no more type error and 
we can successfully append list of apples and list of bananas and create new list of fruits. However, it's quite a bad solution because this mapping does not mean anything. It just retype a list of apples and list of bananas to list of fruits. And more intuitively, a list of apple is list of fruits because apples are fruits and if list contains only apple then we can say that list is list of apple but we can also say that, that list is a list of fruit. Also, when a list contains only bananas then we can say that the list is list of bananas and also we can say that the list is a list of fruit. So, Maybe it is more intuitive that if list T is a subtype of list S, if and only if T is a subtype of S. So it follows the subtype relation of this type parameters. So we call this property covariance. If this property is satisfied, then we say that list is covariant to type parameter. So we can annotate this covariant property by using plus symbol. When we define list with plus symbol and type parameter t, then it will mean that the list will be, co will be covariant to its type parameter t. Then this property will be accepted by type checker. However, in general, mm, Using this property can violate type soundness, so it should very uh, there should be some care to make this true. But however, in this case, we can simply annotate this uh, type parameter t to covariance, so it will not cause any problem related to type soundness. However, in more complex cases, we cannot simply use plus symbol here but I will not um, explain the details here. So the only fact we use here that it is safe, very safe to annotate plus here. So we redefine our list to covariant to its type parameter. And also we define all the methods we defined before again. So they are exactly the same to the previous definitions. And we, we lost this all the things. And now we again do the same thing. We buy apples and bought another apples and append them and we bought some bananas. And we can type check these apples as a list of fruits because now list of apple is a subtype of list of fruit. And we can check type check bananas to list of fruit because list of bananas is a subtype of list of fruit. And now we can simply append apples and bananas because they are a list of apples and bananas, but at the same time they are a list of fruits and they can be appended. So here we will run this code. And so this is the same thing, and when we run this code, you can check that two lists are correctly concatenated and create new list of fruits. So it contains list of um, contains apples and some bananas. So this is the mm, some advantage of variance, and also variance has some more advantage. Now we can define nil to case object again. So here we define nil to be a subtype of list of nothing. So it extends not it does not extend the list of t, and, but here we just draw away type parameter for nil and it simply extends list of nothing. So why inverse? Because list of nothing is subtype of any possible list because nothing is subtype of any type and now list is covariant to its type parameter. So list nothing is subtype of any possible list. So nil can be fit into any occurrence of list. So 
now we can define without some parentheses for nil. So it's a simple value which have type list of nothing. And list of nothing is subtype of list of integer. So this cons of two and nil is successfully type checked to list of integer. So this is integer and this is a list of integer. And also we can use nil as list of strings because this list of nothing is subtype of list of string. And now here, b is string and nil is list of strings, so this cons expression is successfully type checked to list of string. And for type checking, now we do not need parentheses more anymore because we we define nil to object. So we define our list and all the functions again, and then we oh so yeah we just. We define all the thing and load it. And from now on, we will see another interaction between parametric polymorphism and subtype polymorphism. Now, let's say that we will define we want to define function remove soul. So this function removes all already sold fruits from this list. So the remaining list will contain only unsold fruits. So this function takes list of fruits and return list of fruits. And it uses the list filter function to check whether the uh, fruit is already sold or not. And we can call remove sold for list of apples and list of bananas. Uh, so this should be corrected to banana in, in this typo. So, uh, it works well because list of apple is a subtype of list of fruits, so this list can be passed as, as argument, and this function will return list of fruit. So you can run this code here. So we define remove salt function and call this function. So first one um, correctly. Uh, filter out this already sold apple and remaining one is on, only unsold apple and here uh, unsold banana is remaining. However, this implementation has some serious problem because this list has return type of list of fruit so the precision that this original list of list is is list of apple is gone. So this whole list becomes a list of list of fruit and the precision is lost. So we cannot access field radius for this list because radius is a member of apple but not of fruit. Also for a list of bananas, this calling remove salt will lose precision that this list is a list of banana and we cannot access the length of this list because this list is a list of fruit rather than a banana. So you can check this behavior. So this is the code when, when, when we execute. You can see it resolved type error. So we can think some solutions. The fourth one is define for every different version of lim remove soul for every um, possible types. However, it's a bad choice because uh, it, is not, it does not use any code and when we define a new type of fruit, for example, cherry or watermelon, then we should create another function for those types. So it is not scalable solution. So. Um, we can use parametric, parametric polymorphism here, so we will not take type parameter t here, so it will take any kind of list. However, this is not working solution because there is no there is no guarantee that this element of type t has a field soul. So we need some notion of polymorphism, but still need to constrain the type parameter t is a subtype of fruit to have this field sold. So to constrain this 
type parameter t, we use this subtype notation. So this notation means that this type parameter t is constrained to be subtype of fruit. So every call or every invocation of this method should use type argument, which is subtype of fruit. So any other choice of type argument will be rejected by type checker at compile time. So in other words, we say that fruit is an upper bound of P. So after modifying our implementation like this, now we can call this radius or length function for both cases. Because now the precision is not lost, not lost and this whole expression will be type checked as list of apple. And calling radius, accessing radius is very safe. And also in this case, the precision is not lost and whole expression will be type checked as a list of bananas and it is safe to accessing length. However, when we call this remove salt with list of integers, then this choice should be rejected because there is no field salt for integers. And type checker will correctly reject this thing with this error message. So we annotate here that t should be a subtype of fruit, and in this case, type argument will be inferred as integer. However, integer does not conform, the integer does not be a subtype of fruit, so it will be rejected by compiler at compile time. So this is the new definition um, of this salt, and we can call this function with some examples. So it, you can see it works correctly for first two calls, and the last one is correctly rejected with some type errors. So until now, we solve some abstraction of terms. So we abstract terms by types, and we can think some further more abstractions. So here we define list flamma function. So it is similar to map, but it is addition of map and flattening. So flattening means the list contains lists. So it is list of lists, and this two-dimensional list is flattened to one dimension. So it is similar to map function, but it takes its second parameter is a function from p to list of s. And it will return not a list of list of s, it is list of s because every list inside the list is flattened to one dimension. And when we define this unit function, so it, it takes one parameter of type p and it will return simply a list of lengths one containing only this p. So, I will hide implementation and show just some examples. So here, um, the first argument is list of one, two, and three, and it's this anonymous function maps this n to list of n and n squared. However, this, since this is flat map, and this list will be flattened, and resulting list is contains one, one, two, four, three, and nine. So this is for one, this is for two, this is for three, and list to unit one will directly use this argument to create a list of length one. So this is defined here, and when we run this code, you can see that exactly the same thing happened. And also we can think about list map function, but which is defined by using flat map and unit. So to define list map function, first we will call this flat map, but here uh, instead of directly passing this f, since this f is not a list, we simply lift it to be a list. So this anonymous function will have type from t to s, a list of s. So this value of s will become a list of single value s. And it will work well. So this function, this map, 
the result in such a code to such things. So you can check this code works well as I expected. So it results a list of 1, 4, and 9. And we can think about polymorphic auction class. So everything is same to the, our original auction class, but it is now polymorphic with um, various annotation here. So it is similar to the list. Um, it is auction with type parameter t, and it is non, which is subtype of auction nothing, and this is sum of t, which is subtype of auction of t. And also we can think about format and unit for auction. So here, uh, so we actually already saw this function in our second seminar. So it takes one option t, option of t, and function from t to option f. So it, it's analogy for it is some erroneous values, and this function is some function that can be result in erroneous situation. So when it succeeds, then it will return sum of s, and when error happen, then it will be turned on. And when this is sum, then it will apply this f function f, and when it succeeds, then the result will be sum of s. When it fails, then it will be none. And also, if, when it is non, then the whole value will be none. And unit is the same thing for list. It just take value of t and return sum of t. So very simple. So I just show you some example for quick remind. So this will result sum of one because one is mapped with this function, and this will be result sum on non because this returns none, and this will result none because initial value is none. So you can check this behavior. So this is the definition of option and option flat map and union and calling list flat uh, option flat map will result expected behavior. And we can define map function for option by using option flat map and option unit function. So it is exactly the same to the list case. Uh, it calls flat map with O given O and the function F is lifted to create option rather than just S. So it is changed this anonymous function will have type of p arrow option s, and the whole result will be option s. So we can check this function works well that by executing this code, this will map the sum of one by this anonymous function, which is scaring function, and it will return sum of one because one is mapped with this function. So this is the implementation, and when I run this, then we can check that sum one is the result. Now we can see that both function have quite similar structure. So this, the only difference is type in a list or option. So and any other things are same. When we rewrite this function by taking this flat map and unit as parameter, then actually its function body is completely same, and the only difference is this type of types. So here we use list of t, list of s, list of t, list of s, list of s, list of s, and here we use the option of t, option of s, option of t, option of s, option of s, option of s. So the only difference is list and option. So here, what is what are list and option? So actually, it is different from common types like integer or string because there is no value of type list or type option. So there is value of list integer, list string, or option string, but there is no value of list or option. So actually, precisely, they are type operators which takes type and return a type. So they are function from a type to type. So um, in the previous slides, parametric polymorphism is a function from type to some expression or term. However, list and option 
are function from pi to pi. So um, a function is a value which take a value and return a value. And these type of operators like list or option are type which takes a type and return a type. So actually they are different from original type and some new type which is a function for type. So we need a type of type. So we call it kind. Kind is a type of type. And we annotate a proper type, which is a type of value, like integer, string, or arrow type, by this asterisk. So we can say that so these notations are theoretical notation, not notation in Scala. So integer has proper type, so because 0 or 1 are value of integers. And string is also a proper type because some empty string or string A can belong to type string. And also we can easily create a function from integer to string, so integer arrow string is a proper type. However, there is a no value of type list, so it is not a proper type. However, list takes a proper type and create a new proper type. For example, when we pass integer type to this list, then it will create list integer, which is a proper type. So we can annotate it by asterisk, arrow asterisk, which means a proper type to proper type. And option is similar. And because list int is applying proper type to proper type arrow proper type, so the result, resulting kind of list int will be a proper type. So we can use this characteristic or notion for abstracting previous code. So now our map function has new type parameter m, and it is higher kinded. So it means it is not a simple proper type like TNS, but this empty square bracket means m should be some type operator from some type to type. So it means this m can be list or option. So we call this higher kind of type because they have some higher kind, not a, not a simple proper type, but type arrow type. And so every occurrence of list or option are replaced by M. And now we can define li um, list map and list map function by calling this generalized map with type arguments list and t and s. So t and s are given from here. And, and we can omit these type arguments as well. And for option, it's similar. So actually, this unit and flat map is defined for data structure known as monad, which is very popular in functional programming. And list and options are very uh, popular example for Monad, but Monad can simulate a variety of things, for example, input and output, and some states, and as so on many things. So we saw how can we use this higher kind of types, which is type operator in Scala. So we saw some abstractions possible in programming. So first, the most simplest abstraction is abstracting a term by a term. So this is lambda, lambda abstraction or a function. So we can abstract a term by term. And also we saw today a abstraction of term by a pipe. So this is parametric polymorphism. So here, for example, we can polymorphize polymorphize list by type parameter t, or polymorphize this method by type parameter t. And also we saw that abstracting a type by a type, so this is type operator, for example, list or options. And in Scala, we can explicitly define some type operator like this. So only remaining part is abstracting a type by a term. So actually, it is a very rare choice in programming languages because uh, type checking, this 
abstractive type by a term will be very hard and mm, impossible to decide. So mm, we call this feature dependent types, but uh, we cannot see these features for most of practical languages. But uh, usually, dependent types are used for mm, proof automations languages, for example, COP. So we can think about these four kinds of abstractions in programs. So today, we saw parametric polymorphism, which parameterize implementation by using type parameters. So we can implement some features once, but use for multiple types. And when parametric polymorphism interacts with subtyping or subtype polymorphism, then variance and bounds of type parameters are interesting features. And also, we think about another layer of abstraction, which is an abstraction of type by a type. And we call them higher kind of types. So the most important thing in computer science is abstraction. We have several notions of abstractions, and they can make our code more reusable and modular. So thank you. Thank you for coming every time. Uh, by the way, Professor. Mm -hmm.